people, the headlines, the issues impacting you, all on This Week in Cincinnati on 9 in Your Side. Welcome back. Thousands of you use the Brent Spence Bridge every single day, but it is showing its age. We saw one more example of that this week, in fact. Northbound traffic was backed up Monday morning as crews put a temporary fix in place because of a damaged expansion joint and the concrete around it. That does not affect the structural integrity of the bridge, but it could damage vehicles. And as we record the program on Friday afternoon, those two lanes are scheduled to be closed so those repairs can be finished. Important repairs. Joining us to talk about what it takes to keep Brent Spence in good repair and operating is Bob Yeager, the chief engineer for the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet in Northern Kentucky. I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You bet. So lots of people talk about the Brent Spence Bridge and they ask, why can't we just get a new bridge? Right. Yeah. And we and we can and we will. And, okay. and of course, the funding is the is the big issue, as it is with most things that we have today. So uh, that's that's a long term plan. Mm -hmm. And and until we get that done, you know, we'll keep keep what we have in good shape and reasonable shape so that everybody like like myself can use it every day. Sure. Let's let's talk about the bridge by the numbers. Brent Spence opened when what year uh, in, in the early 60s 63 i think okay and it was originally designed to carry about 85,000 vehicles a day 80, right 85,000 cars a day three oh, lanes three lanes yes but as of 2006 it was carrying 150,000 vehicles yes and we changed the configuration to have four lanes which took the shoulders off the road mm -hmm. uh, and so that that adds increases the capacity which gets more people across it but again gives you that feeling of being a little more confined the lanes are only 11 feet instead of 12, and there's no shoulders. And of course, if you're on the lower deck, you feel confined because you actually have a ceiling and a floor mm -hmm. and walls. <laughs> well, it raises the question too, when you have 150,000 vehicles a day, um, what does that do to wear and tear on the bridge? Well, ob obviously it's like, it's like putting more miles on your car, you know, but they're highway miles, so they're good miles. Um, the, the biggest thing I think that, that changes the, the use of the bridge is, is the number of trucks that we have. We've seen over the years mm -hmm. that the, the percentage of truck traffic has gone up. That's great for the area, great vitality, you know, more infrastructure means uh, more, more jobs, uh, you know, more, more advanced things that we have here. But I think the, uh, the idea is that it just makes us look at it a little closer. You know, my car is the same kind of way as it gets some age on it. I just have to plan ahead to do the things that I need to do in advance of making sure it doesn't break down. So in any one given year, how many projects do you have on Brent Spence? Uh, typically, we wouldn't have, we, would, we only have big projects like we had sure. last year when we redid the deck. And next year, when we're going to paint it. Mm -hmm. uh, those are those are the big projects, and those those come uh, a bridge deck. Uh, the replacement of the deck is about every 20 years. The painting about every 30 years. Now, some of us will remember when we painted it the last time. Mm -hmm. A lot less cars, though. But the uh, the big things about that is how do we get the cars across there while we're doing this? There's no alternate to send the, the traffic somewhere else while we're doing these major repairs. Minor repairs can come up pretty much any time. Mm -hmm. Like what, what, what we've seen here this past week, you know, we, we, we find something, uh, we make the temporary repair, we plan to, to do something more substantial, and that's how that goes. Potholes, uh, we sure. should be out of that business, but, but mm -hmm. you know, any a pothole can come up any time. Snow and ice, accident relate, uh, relates to shutting down the, the bridge in different times. So there's, there's any number of things that we can't plan for. But those things that we can, you know, the big things, the, the painting, the decks, you know, the superstructure, those kinds of things. Any of those things that need our attention are planned well in advance. We're already starting looking at the painting and that's not till next year. All right, all right. So to keep the bridge in good shape, good appearance, all of those things, what does that cost every year? Uh, the, any any particular part of the bridge at any given time, uh, the, 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 the thing that we did last year was, was like $20 million, and that mm -hmm. was for the new deck. Um, the bridge painting could be upwards of 15 to $17 million. So those, those are the really big things. The incidental things, the bolts are replacing, you know, a few thousand dollars. But the, the cost and some of that stuff is just closing down the lanes, getting the information out there. When we shut down two lanes of traffic, it takes us two hours before we even start doing the work. Wow. So a two-hour project is six hours long. When you talk about getting a new bridge someday, how is that going to look different from what we currently have? Well, it, it, the plans are right now would be to use, utilize the existing bridge we have and have a sister bridge next to it. Mm -hmm. So that the, you know this bridge is going. This bridge is structurally sound. It'll be around for a long time. There's no sense not to use use the, the infrastructure that we have. Mm -hmm. So taking some of the relief off there, converting it back to the way it was designed, just bringing it back to the to the three lane configuration uh, would help considerably and and making making it last a lot longer. 
So you kind of live the Brent Spence Bridge. I have, yes. What keeps you up at night about it, I, if I anything? I, I think accidents on the bridge. I think okay. because of that, I think it's a... It, it Is it seems, because of the narrow configuration? I think it's a sense that people feel that they have a concern about that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the speed, obviously speed's picked up on those things. So uh, during during rush hour, uh, we don't really have as, as, as big as detail of, of accidents that you would have than when it's kind of open free freely open because a high-speed car can do more damage than anything else do other repair projects compete with the projects of the Brent Spence uh, there are projects anywhere along the 75 corridor in Kenton and Boone counties uh, it has its challenges for traffic mm -hmm. um, you know where uh, we've widened that you know the interstates were not as wide say so where we've added lanes of that and we're using all of those lanes every day we use those lanes those projects that we can do off ours late at night mm -hmm. like the work we're doing now out around the buttermilk pike we're doing that work on night and weekends to stay out of the heavy traffic problems that that, that adds to the cost um, and it adds to the length of time that we're out there because we're not working during the day so those take special considerations to do that that work that way for the convenience of the public we have about 20 seconds left this is your opportunity to speak directly to the viewer what do you want them to know about brent spence the brent spence is certainly is, is, is it's a safe it's a safe bridge and it's going to stay that way we'll make sure of that and, and it'll be an it'll be in service will it get more congested as, as as years go by yes it could will there be uh, will there be uh, uh, tackles for us to do uh when we when we construct something new there yes there will be because anytime you work through construction that's obviously the worst time to travel through an area sure. so <laughs> when we're doing the work, if you can avoid it, even this weekend uh, from Saturday morning till Sunday evening, if you can avoid it, that area, we'd appreciate that as well. All right. Robert Yeager, thanks for imparting your knowledge. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Dangerous drones, the close encounters with planes that could turn deadly, and the stunning reply when we asked federal authorities why more isn't being done about this. The people, the headlines, the issues impacting you, all on This Week in Cincinnati on 9 in Your Side.